Hello, Mindsetters, and welcome to it. It's another beautiful edition of Mindset Learn Extra Exam School Edition, proudly brought to you by the Department of Basic Education and MTN South Africa. As you guys know this face, my name is Katlejo. We are together, great 12s, for an entire hour. We're doing maths paper, uh, maths literacy. <laughs> Excuse me. We're doing maths literacy paper one, and I'm not alone in the studio. I'm with Peter. Sir, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you, Kat. Big mistake there, hey? Ma you never say the word maths to me, all right? <laughs> maths literacy, that's what is, uh, it's all about. I was watching a bit of the maths beforehand, and I was thinking, what a load of garbage, eh? X's and Y's and Z's, where on earth do you use that in real life? <laughs> maths lit's the way to go. All right, yes, guys, we're doing maths literacy, excuse me, Peter, there. And, of course, guys, we're together for an entire hour. I'll be explaining or introducing a beautiful competition that we've uh, been running here on Mindset Learn Extra, where you stand a chance to win yourself a Chevrolet Spark L. Just make sure that you just don't touch that dial and don't go anywhere. Remember, we are active on social media, on Facebook. We are triple, at triple www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra with an X. On Twitter, we are available as well. It's at learn extra. So just go there, and then you interact with us. We are going to be posting in the challenge question soon and just make sure that you guys go and answer any question that you might have uh, regarding mass literacy just make sure that you interact with us on our social media page and of course just guys i'll be introducing a, a beautiful competition as I, in, as I i alluded earlier links to the questions and i mean links to the notes and links to uh, all the memorandums and everything else that you might need to help you prep well uh, on our facebook page is www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra but right now i'm just going to throw it back to Peter. I have no idea how you remember all that. Okay, <laughs> folks, today is a crucial lesson, hey? Why? Because this time tomorrow, you would have written your mathematical literacy paper one. In other words, folks, this is your last possible opportunity to ask me some questions on some of the things to do with paper one. We'll deal with paper two another day. But any question to do, do with paper one, please let us know, okay? Because Lego's at the computer, you, get, you can type in yep. your question, he will then let me know what it is at break, and then we will be able to answer that question. Remember, there is no stupid question at all, except one. And that's the question you ask after you've written the examination. Folk, it's too late then, okay? <laughs> so, bring in your questions, we will answer them no matter how big, no matter how small, as long as they to do with the paper one type question, okay? While you're thinking of your question or while you're busy typing in your question, I thought we'd go through a little bit of a text type question. Now, a lot of people think that text is really just for paper two. Well, in reality, there's nothing to stop us from asking you a text question in paper one like this question that came up in your exemplar paper earlier this year. Let's have a look at it. Kevin is a 45-year-old man who works for a tourism company. He earns a gross salary of 28,754 Rand 50 per month and a 13th check at the end of the company's financial year. The following are deducted from his salary on a monthly basis. 7.5% of his salary goes towards his pension, and 1,434 Rand and 70 cents goes towards his medical aid. We're asked to calculate Kevin's monthly contribution towards his pension. Now, folks, this is kind of important, okay? Um, because when you look at pension and when you look at medical aid, Remember that your a po a po portion, blah, blah, I'm getting all tongue-tied, I think it's so hot in here. It's unbelievably hot here today. I don't know why that is. Normally it's always raining yeah. and, and thunderstorms when we're doing maths lit outside, but today it's extremely hot, and especially in the studio. So I think that's why I'm throwing all my tongues and it's getting all weird and wonderful. Let's try that again. Part of the amount you pay towards your pension and medical aid is something we call tax deductible. In other words, the tax man is going to pretend that you don't earn that money because you're actually doing the government a favor by belonging to a pension fund because then they don't have to worry about you when you're old, okay? And the government actually like it when you belong to a medical aid. 
Because that means when you get sick, your medical aid pays the bills and you don't have to go off to a government hospital. And so the government don't have to pay for your medical expenses. So they encourage you to belong to pension schemes. They encourage you to belong to medical aids so that um, they don't have to worry about you. And how do they encourage you? They encourage you by saying, whatever you pay towards pension or medical aid, we'll pretend you don't earn that money. So the first question. We want to know, calculate Kevin's monthly contribution towards his pension. Now, how much is he paying towards his pension? He's paying 7.5% of his gross salary, which is the amount we pay before it will get paid before any deductions come off. So we are going to say, well, that's kind of easy, hey? All we've got to do is find 28,000 Rand. 750, oops, my goodness me, let's try that again. It seems like my hand's doing the writing and not the pen. There we go. Okay, back to the pen and everything's under control. 28,754 rand and 50 cents. Now, we want to find 7.5% of that. So we're going to say times 7.5%. Okay, now... How can we write 7.5%? So, folks, we can write 7.5% as 7.5% and then use the percentage calculate, uh, button on our calculator. Or we can say times 7,5 over 100. Okay, both ways are acceptable. So, let's do that. So, on my calculator, out it comes. And again, I always use a calculator. And again, chaps, tomorrow. Don't try and think you are um, never going to make a careless mistake. Remember, and some of you have already started exams already. In fact, this week was quite rough for some of you. Okay? And you know the tension you feel when you go in to write that exam. Tomorrow when you write the exam, you're going to feel, whoa, this is it. I've got to do well. And you're going to be a little bit nervous. Why? Because you're writing this huge exam and you could make a careless mistake. So use your calculator. Got that? Of course, you're also going to feel confident because you've been watching a lot of Mindset TV and you've been following our series this year and so we've been helping you through it. And so you should be anticipating great things in your exam tomorrow. Okay, so we've got 28,754 rand and 50 cents. We're going to multiply that now by 7.5 either over 100 or I can push the percentage button. Equals, and I get an amount of 2,156 Rand. Let's write that, 2,156 Rand. And then look at all these weird and wonderful cents I have. Comma, 5875 cents. Now chaps, you know, and ladies, you know, that when it comes to rands and cents, we can only have a maximum of 99 cents. Yeah, I've got funny digits going on behind me. So I've got to round that to two decimal places. Now, 5, 8, or 5, 9. What's the next digit? The next digit you'll see is a 7. So the 5, 8 has got to become 5, 9. All right, so comma, 5, Nine. That's how much we got to pay towards our pension every single month. Okay, next question goes on. Calculate Kevin's annual medical aid contribution. Now, take a look at that. What does annual mean? Annual means our yearly. So if he is paying a certain amount every month, how are we going to determine how much he pays in a year? We're going to multiply that by 12, because they're 12 months in a year. Now, I want to just say this, okay? I've marked matric papers where matrix have made the careless mistake of actually saying times 10, okay? Silly mistake. Guys, you know they're 12 months in a year. We're going to multiply that by 12. So, how much is it? There it is. 1,434 rand and 70 cents. We're going to multiply that now by 12, okay? And by multiplying that by 12, out comes our calculator, and we say 
0 0.70, multiply that by 12, equals, and we get an answer of 17,216 rand. 17,216 rand. And then it's got comma 4. Can you get comma 4 of a set or of a rand? Absolutely yeah. not. Okay. What do you think it should be? Okay. I think we should round it off. To how many decimal places? Two. Two, two. hey? Absolutely. Because there are a maximum of 99 cents. Yeah. But if I've got comma four, I can't say this. I've got to put 40 cents. You don't go into a shop and someone says, oh, that costs comma four of a uh, rand. No, no. It costs 40 cents. So we've got to put in that second decimal place. Right. 1.3. Kevin's taxable income for the year of assessment ending 28th of the second month, 2013, was 330,713 rand and two cents. Describe how Kevin's taxable income was calculated. Okay, so how did we calculate all his tax, right? His taxable income. So first of all, we have to know how much does this guy earn every single year, right? So we're going to say, well, because it does ask for annual, hey? Um, Kevin's taxable income, right? It, say, it says annual. So the first thing we're going to say is this, that if he earns 28,754.50, and let's get that up on our calculator. We're going to move the screen here, and let's clear that. So I've got 28,754 rand and 50 cents. That's what he earns in a month. So in a year, we're going to multiply that by 12. Multiply that by 12, and there's our answer. 305, uh, sorry, 345,000, let's get it up again, and 54 rand, 054. So that's what he earns every single year. But, folk, we've got to deduct his annual pension. Now, the figure you see behind me of 2,156 rand and 59 cents, that's how much he contributed monthly to his pension. We are working yearly stuff out, aren't we? So we've got to work this out in a year. All right. So, take this figure, and we're going to multiply it by 12. Out comes my calculator, and I'm moving my calculator again. So, we've got 2,156 rand and 59. We're going to multiply that by 12, and we're getting a figure now of 25,879. 25,879 rand, and... Eight cents. Okay? So that's got to be deducted from his gross salary. Now, what else are we going to deduct? We are also going to deduct this medical aid. And remember, we calculated the medical aid already to being this amount that he pays every year, which is, and I'm going to write it up here, 17,216 rand and 40 cents. Okay? So, folk, when we look at this figure, if we deduct all these figures so that we've got the 345,054 rand, we're going to deduct the 25,800 and whatever. We're then going to deduct the 17,000. We are hoping that we're going to get 330,000 rand. Okay, so let's do this. Out comes the calculator. And we are going to say, right, I've got 345054 minus 25,879 rand and 8 cents minus 17,216 rand and 40 cents. And we land up with 301,958 rand 52 cents. Okay, happy, but 
we've got a problem. Because, let me write this down. I must admit, I'm missing my producer today because normally I have an earpiece and then she shouts out the numbers in my ear because I always forget them. But today I haven't got an earpiece. In fact, shock, we haven't even got an aircon in here. So life is really getting glim in here. <laughs> so, Kat, I'm going to ask you to help me remember this figure. Will you All remember right. it? 301 958. Okay? 301 958 52. Got that? Yep. Cool. So let's write it. Three oh, oops, three oh one. Nine five eight. Nine five eight and. Fifty two. Fifty two. Yep. No man. Fifty two. You're right. Fifty two. Okay. I want us to look at something here. It says show that his tax was three hundred and thirty thousand seven hundred and twelve. <coughs> Fuck, I didn't get 330,000. I got 301,000. So now I'm sitting in an exam. And I come across this figure and I'm thinking, holy cow, what do I do now? Okay, so I'm going back to read the question. Right, I already know what I've done wrong. But let's pretend I'm an exam and I'm absolutely clueless. Okay, when we read the exam again, a uh, question again, it says, he earns that a month but he gets a 13th check. So in other words, he gets an additional 28,754 rand, 28,754 rand and 50 cents. Ah, now that's going to make life interesting. So let's do that on our calculator. Up it comes and we say plus 28,000. 754 and, and 50 cents and we land up ladies and gentlemen with much pride in my heart we've got the right answer you see how easy it is to forget something but don't panic go back read the question got to be a mistake i've made remember the examiner hasn't made a mistake your papers are checked <coughs> and checked and checked and checked again right First thing I want to ask you, Kat, I think we've got to take an ad break, okay? Yeah, yeah. But the first thing I want to ask you is this, have we got questions coming in? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Guys, that hurts my heart <laughs> like you cannot believe. This is your last opportunity to ask questions, so please send them in. Right. And do that during the break. Awesome. Remember, guys, we are on Facebook. It's www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Just go there and then you'll just find a portal where you can just throw all of those questions that you might need assistance with when it comes to message literacy paper one. We're just going to go for a quick ad break. When you come back, I'll be giving you guys instructions, three easy steps to driving away with that Chevrolet or in that Chevrolet Spark L. We'll be back in a little bit. Alrighty, welcome back guys. You're still tuned in to Mindset, Learn Extra, it's exam school time and of course guys we are here for you at all times. We know it's very very challenging at this point in time. Most of you are struggling with nerves and most of you guys feel like you're not ready enough. You've tuned in to the right channel. It's Mindset, Learn, Mindset, Learn Extra, Exam School. I'm with Peter, we're doing Mass Literacy, Paper 1. And I've got uh, two questions, one from Anja and Jason. I'm just going to combine them. Anja is asking Peter, what is meant by the 13th check? And Jason is asking, is the 13th, th 13th check calculatable? Can you calculate taxable. the 13th check? Oh, okay. So taxable. Sorry. Okay. Right. Great questions. Let's just, we've got to understand those, hey? So what is a 13th check? Well, every year you, or every month you get paid a salary. And it comes through to you every single month. Now, what normally happens is you get something called a 13th check. Now, that check can be given to you in your birthday month, right? So, for example, if I'm a teacher and I'm teaching in a government school, the government say, happy birthday, here's a present for you. You're getting another month's salary on top of your month's salary, and they would give it to me on the month of my birthday. Some companies would give a 13th check, which is equivalent or the same as your actual normal salary and you could get another one normally that can come in at the end of november so you got a bit of money for christmas which is kind of cool okay and for those holidays which sometimes we really need not everyone gets a 13th check do you get a 13th check no no i don't even know what that means okay i don't even get a 13th check I hope my boss is watching this all right so 13th check is an extra month salary 
Is it taxable? Oh yes, absolutely. It has to be taxable. And that's why, if you remember correctly, when we did this, we had to add the other 28,000 to get our final amount of money that would have been taxable. All right, I hope that answers those questions. Thanks for sending them in. Keep sending in, all right? And you awesome. just smile and wave if there's another one, all right? I cool. shall do that. Yes, guys, as I told you that we have an exciting competition that we are running, you stand a chance to win yourself a Chevrolet Spark L just by three simple steps. Go into any of your major retail stores uh, and just get yourself this K53 book, or you can download the app on a Samsung Galaxy app, uh, K53, or on uh, Google Play, and just go onto our Facebook page, just like and share. It's three easy steps that will see you driving away in that Chevrolet Spark L1 of four that we're giving away, guys. Take it away. Absolutely. Great car to win, folk. <laughs> Great car. Fantastic prize. Well worth entering. Okay. Especially when you've done well in your maths lit exam tomorrow. Yeah. You can be <laughs> ultra proud and go for a drive at the end of the year. I think they're drawing it at the end of the year. No, it's just towards the end of this month. Towards the end of this month? Yeah. You mean November. November month? Okay, yeah, November, November month they draw you. <laughs> How fantastic. Imagine that. Getting up uh, your results and celebrating by driving uh, your mom and dad off to dinner. Okay? In your own Chevy Spock. Well worth it. Let's yeah. get on with the question. I'm talking too much and we've got to do math slip. Right. Marika is building a vegetable shade tunnel in her yard to grow the vegetables she needs for her coffee shop. The vegetable shade tunnel is shown in the photographs below. There they are there. And you can see that you have a cloth covering the whole thing. You have an arc. You have the height, the width of this whole um, tunnel, and then the length, okay? Very nice of the examiner to give, show you what they mean by the height, the width, the length, because you will see later on, they actually, you require to use those. So the dimensions of the vegetable shade tunnel are as follows. The length is 6,5 meters. The width is 4,4 meters. There's a maximum height of 2,2 meters. Now, the vegetable shade tunnel is exactly half a cylinder. Guys, that's very important. Eh? Now, it goes on to ask us a few questions. Calculate the length of the arc of the vegetable tunnel. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. Uh, use the formula P equals length of the arc, okay, which is pi times R, where pi is 3,142 and R is the radius. Very important. Listen to me carefully, folk. In paper one, if you need to use a formula, the examiner will give you that formula. Right? So don't make up your own formula. If there's no formula given, chances are you are not required to use a formula. And if you are given a formula and you're not using that formula, chances are you've messed up badly. Okay? I never understand that. Okay? Why folk are given a formula and then they come up with their own or they don't even use it. Guys, learn this right now. Tomorrow, when you open your exam paper and you see formulas in question, say to yourself, myself, I remember Pete last night on TV saying, when you see a formula, you use that formula, so I'm going to use that formula. Right, so let's go for it. So P is equal to, and I'm just going to go this up here so I can see, equals pi times R. What is pi? It's 3 comma 1 4 times the radius. Okay, now let's have a look at this. What is the radius of this whole thing? Well, here's the width. And the width of a semicircle is actually the diameter, isn't it? Of course it is. I'm telling you. So what is the radius? Well, the radius is half the diameter. So they've given me a width here of what? 4,4 meters. So what is the radius? The radius must be half of that, which is 2 comma 2 meters. Out comes my calculator. It's going to do some work for me now. 3.14 multiplied by 2.2. 2. 
equals, and we get an answer of 6,908. 6,908 meters. In other words, this length here, from the ground all the way up, is 6,908 meters. Now, tomorrow, when you get your exam paper, you write three things down on the cover. Number one, have I answered the question? Number two, have I rounded correctly? And number three, does my answer make any sense? So here's my first question. Have I answered the question? Yes, I have. It said, find the perimeter of the R. And that's exactly what I've done. Number two, have I rounded correctly? Round to two decimal places. Uh-oh. No, no. I haven't finished done that properly, have I? Because I've got three decimal places. And we don't want three. We want two. So I know that my answer is either going to be 6,90 or 6,91. What's going to determine that? This 8. That 8 says, yes, like, this is a big number up the 90 to 90, uh, 1. And that's what we do. So my answer is 6,91 meters. Third question, does it make any sense? Well, yeah, I would say it makes sense. I've got 4,4 meters. I've got a height of 2,2. Two, this whole, uh, you know what? I would say that whole length being uh, 6,91 meters is not crazy. Imagine if I got an answer of 691 meters. Then I'd say, whoa, something's wrong. Or imagine if I got an answer of six kilometers. Whoa, something's wrong. Okay? Can you see how I talk to myself the whole time? And guys, when you're in your exam, you've got to have that communication. Talk to yourself. Have I answered the question? Have I rounded correctly? Does my answer make any sense? I love talking to myself. Okay? For two reasons. Do you know what those reasons are? No. I'll tell you. <laughs> Number one, I like talking to nice people, and I like listening to nice people. Okay, so let's move on. Question two, still part of that. The dimensions of the vegetable shade tunnel, right, we've gone through that. Determine the minimum amount of uh, net shade cloth required to cover the whole tunnel by calculating the surface area of the vegetable tunnel. The following formula may be used. Oh my giddy aunt, I've got to laugh at myself when I see that. May be used. In other words, you use it. Right. So, surface area is pi times uh, 2r plus length times the uh, p. Where pi is 3, 142. Okay. So, we've got, oops, where have I gone? Here we go. Right, let's find some more space. We're saying the surface area is pi times r, I'm sure that's supposed to be squared, okay, plus length times p equals, what's pi? 3 comma 1, 4 times my radius. We worked out that radius, remember? We said... If my width is 4,4 meters, my radius must be 2,2 2 meters. So 2,2 2 squared plus what is the length of my tent? It says here the length is 6,5 meters plus 6,5 meters times P. What does P represent? Okay, uh, P is the length of the arc. And we just calculated that, didn't we? Yes, we did. And we got an answer of, who can remember? Um, see, this way I need my producer. She always shouts in my ear. 6, 9, 1. 6, 9, 1. Now, folk, really, I've done nothing difficult here. I've been given a formula. I've taken this formula and I've just put in the figures that have been given to me in the question. There is seriously nothing difficult about that. When you get a question like that tomorrow, boy, you guys must be smiling because you know you are guaranteed of 
four marks. Straight up. What a pleasure. Okay, so out comes my calculator. The calculator's got to do the work. I am not going to do the work. Why? Because my parents paid a lot of money for this calculator, and so I'm going to use it. 3.14 multiplied by 2.2 squared plus 6.5 multiplied by 6.91 equals, and here's my answer, 60,1126 equals 60,1126. Is that right, Kev? Yeah. Yeah, you say? Okay, cool. Now, what units am I using? This is a big thing in paper one. When I'm dealing with perimeter, I've got single units like millimeters, centimeters, meters, or kilometers. Okay? When I'm dealing with area, I'm using squared. So I've got millimeters squared, centimeters squared, meters squared, or kilometers squared. I think you've got to move the eyebrows up when you do the square. Okay. <laughs> Didn't realize I was doing that. Let's do it again. Okay. And when I'm dealing with volume, it's cubed. So I've got millimeters cubed, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, and kilometers cubed. cubed. Got that? <laughs> Perimeter, single units. Area, squared. Volume, cubed. Your paper one markers, the people who mark that paper, Telling you, folk, they're going to take marks off if you get that wrong. But get it right. Now, what are we dealing with? We're dealing in meters, but it's squared. Why is it squared? Because it's area. I just want to ask myself now, first of all, have I answered the question? Yes. Have I rounded correctly? Well, I'm not sure. Let's see. Determine the amount, blah, blah, the following four. It doesn't tell me how many decimal places to round it to. But if I look at the cover, the cover might give it away. And it might just say round to two decimal places. So rounding that, we're going to get an answer of 60,11 meters squared. Okay, great. Let's keep moving on. I hope questions are coming in there, Kat. Are they? Yeah. Fantastic. So we'll answer those just now. Hey? Let's just All try right. and finish this one quickly. We've got one minute and one second before our air break. In fact, now we've got 56 <laughs> seconds, now 55, now, okay, let's go. Right, so, determine the perimeter of the garden enclosed by the vegetable tunnel. So we've got this tunnel, and the question is saying, what is the perimeter of that tunnel? Okay, in other words, if I were to draw it on this, we are saying, what is the perimeter? If I walk from there to there to there, back to there and to there again. What is that perimeter? Well, that's kind of easy, isn't it? Because it's two widths and two lengths. Do they give me a formula? Oh my goodness, how wonderful is that? They do. They say perimeter is two times the length. What is my length? My length, we told, is, da -da -da -da, here it is, 6,5 meters. So 6,5 meters plus, it also asks for the width. What is my width? Gee, we've worked with that a long, a long time. I should know that. 4,4 meters. 4,4 meters. And again, guys, out comes my calculator. It's going to do the work. 2 times bracket 6.5 plus 4.4 close brackets equals. What is the answer? There she is. 21,8. 21,8 what? Meters. Meters squared, meters cubed, no, just meters, because we're dealing with perimeter. Let's try to finish this question very quickly. Mariki wants to spread compost with a uniform thickness of 0,05 meters over the enclosed garden area. Calculate the volume of the compost required. Okay, again, they give us a formula. Guys, this examiner has been so ultra nice to us. Okay, gives us the formula for calculating volume of a rectangle. How easy is that? So how are we going to do it? We're going to put the length in, which we said was uh, 6,5 meters, times the width, which is 4,4 meters, times the height. What was the height? The height was, where is she? Um, da -da -da -dum. Here's the question here. Uh, 0, 0,05 meters. That's how thick this compost is going. So when we multiply those figures together, we get our answer. All right.
Time for a break, I think. Awesome, guys. Let's just go grab a breather, and then when we come back, we'll be attending to some of your questions. And I see most of you guys are, are confused a bit, but then Peter and I will make sure that we just clarify a couple of things when it comes to what we're doing here, Math Literacy Paper 1. Just make sure that you guys just don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, Mindsetters. You're still tuned in to Mindset Learn Extra Special Edition. It's exam a time, and we just made sure that we cater for you to exam school. And just make sure that, guys, you just keep at it with us every single day, and we'll make sure that we help you ace those exams. Uh, we're just going to go to a couple of questions that uh, you guys need a clarity on. Uh, come, when it comes to what we're doing here. But then before that, I'll just like to tell you about this awesome competition that we're running, guys. It's a, a Chevrolet Be A Bright Spark competition where you stand a chance to walk away or drive away in the Chevrolet Spark L. It's three easy, simple steps. You just go into any of your retail stores, buy this K53 book, and then just keep your receipt at all times. Go to our Facebook page, like the page, and then just make sure that you go there and then enter all your details and just share it with all your all of your friends. And you could just drive away in the Chevrolet Spark L. And I see most of you guys are confused over a digit, a single digit that we missed a little bit earlier. Felicia is asking for Peter uh, to use 3.1 Four two instead of three point one four, and I see uh, Immaculate also saying uh, we should use three point one four two instead of three point one four. As that's what the question required for us to do. Absolutely, and you know what? I was so wrong. Hey? It's bad habit. The question did say use three point one four two, and I use three point one four. It should have been the t with two, and so we should have added it to you. Folk, I do apologize for that. That was seriously wrong of me. Someone wrote there and said, why have you done that? Let me tell you why I did that. I did that because I made a mistake, and I'm really, really sorry for that. Even I can make mistakes, eh? Sure. That's kind of bad. <laughs> okay, really is. Other questions we've got. Guys, a lot of people have asked us, please, can you calculate tax using tax yeah. tables and all that? Folk, um, I'm going to keep that for paper two because those are really complex kind questions. And uh, so let's see what comes out. Um, maybe it would probably in your paper two. Might come up in your paper one where they might ask you uh, or how much rebate does this person pay or whatever. But generally when we ask you to calculate all of tax, it normally, using those complicated tax, normally comes up paper two. Of course, I could be wrong, and it could come up in a paper one for the first time. But generally, guys, with that, what they could ask you in a paper one is kind of this. So I don't have a tax table with me. But let's just say um, we're earning uh, between nothing and, let's say, uh, 100,000 rand. And then from 101,000 Rand all the way to, let's say, 200,000 Rand. I don't have these figures exactly. I'm just making this up as we go along. And that could be tax table one, tax table two. And then we have things called rebates. Okay. And with the rebate, that's the amount of money that gets deducted from the tax that you actually got to pay. And they might say if you're between naught and the age of 63, you get a rebate of, uh, let's say, 20, uh, let's say 8,000 Rand, okay? Um, if you uh, above 63, so let's say you're from the age of 64 to, let's say, 70, you get an additional rebate of 3,000 Rand. And if you from 71 upwards, We'll give you a further 5,000 Rand rebate. So I would presume, and I haven't seen your exam paper, obviously. I don't even know what it looks like. But I'd presume if you did get a tax question on, on, in a paper one, that they would be more basic type questions about the tax. It wouldn't be heavily, heavily involved tax. I would presume that's more paper two. So in our next session of paper two, I'll tackle one of those tax questions. Is that all right? Awesome. Okay, please carry on sending your questions in. We only got about 15 minutes of this program left, which is really scary. So you've got to send them in quickly within the next five minutes, and hopefully I'll be able to answer it. Please don't send in questions like um, cover the section on um, ratios. <laughs> well, guys, sheesh, that's such a big section. Rather send us a question. How would you do this question? 
mm. then I can tackle that one ideally. But, you know, th only 14 minutes and 51 seconds to go. I can't teach a whole section, right? I'm just here to help you sort out one or two little problems. All right. And remember that you can always go back to our uh, Learn Extra page and go back to all the programs that have shown throughout the year. And we've covered most of the topics in those programs. So if you go to Learn Extra, and I do that with my guys as well, we go to learnextra.com. Is it? Or .co.za? What is it? It's a .co.za. .co.za. I kid you not. Okay. Then you will come across, you click on all kinds of weird and wonderful things. Eventually you find all the programs for the year. And you can click on that and you can actually get the YouTube clips of all our other live shows okay that we've had throughout the year and like i said you can actually find the one so if you're battling with a certain topic go find it and hey who knows you might get the answers out of that but in the meantime just send us a quick little question don't ask us to teach you a whole section unfortunately we just don't have the time to do that all right let's move on quickly uh, we're going to go to our next question. Here it is. Young studies the different religious denominations to which people belong in South Africa. Table 2 below shows the information from the 2012 population profile of South Africa. And there it is. Now, you can see they give religious denominations like the Zion Christian Church, uh, the Charismatic Pentecostal Churches, the Methodist Church, etc., etc. Um, and then they also give you symbols representing those churches. So when I see a Z, I know they're talking about the Zion Christian Church. When I see a CP, I know they're talking about Charismatic Pentecostal Churches. All right. And then they give us the percentage of the members. So what they're actually saying is this. So this guy does a survey. What's his name? Jan. Jan does a survey and he says that 11,1% of the South African population in 2012 belong to the Zion Christian Church. In the same way, 15,1% um, of the population of South Africa belong to no Christian organization. They didn't belong to anything. All right. So, here are the questions. Which religious denomination has the highest percentage of people that belong to it? Guys, these are typical paper one questions. Just straightforward. Giving you a table and asking you to read information from that. Okay. So, which is the highest? Here she is here. 36% which is other Christian churches. Right. Next one. Determine the total percentage of people that belong to Christian denominations. So what's the total amount? Well, here are the Christian churches over here. These ones, all the way down to here. So what's it actually asking you to do? It's asking you just to add those up. And I'm not going to do that now, right? Because you know how to do it. You're going to say 11.1 plus 8.2 plus 6.8. And you're going to keep adding all the way up to the 36. And eventually you're going to get your final answer. And I think it's somewhere around 49% or, or 89 or 79%. Jeez, and I'm really taking a guess, eh? 49, 79. Let's, let's do it. Why not? Okay, I could just imagine my producer saying, oh, he's so lazy. He's just not prepared <laughs> to push buttons. So let me do it. So, plus 8.2, plus 6.8, plus 6.7, plus 3.8, plus 7.1, and finally, plus 36, and we get an answer, and there she is there, 79,7%. So, the answer here will be 79,7%. Now, folks, I just want to bring your attention to this. That's for two marks, okay? Now, obviously, they're going to want you, sh you to show them what you're actually doing. So I'm going to say this, plus this, plus this, plus this. Just in case I push a wrong button on my calculator and I've shown the examiner this is what I'm adding, but I get the wrong answer, I'm still going to get one out of two. And guys, don't look at that as one mark. One out of two means 50%. I'll tell you what, I'd rather get 50% for a question than 0%. Okay, every mark counts, and you've got to work hard to get every one of those marks. Now, determine the range of the data above. So what is the range? The range is the highest minus the lowest. So my range, the, here's my highest, 36, 
and my lowest looks like 1,4. So I'm going to say 36 minus 1,4, and we'll probably land up with 34,6 as my range. 34,6%. Cool. Next one. Arrange the religious denominations in ascending order of their percentage members. Use the given symbols. Folk, I'm not going to do that because we're really running out of time. But what they're actually asking you to do is arrange those figures in ascending order. So I'm going to just tell you quickly now, ascending, descending, right? Ascending sounds like up. Descending is down, okay? Descending, down. Ascending up. Got it? Even though ascending spelt with an A and up spelt with a P, uh, U, they still sound the same. Right. That is where I'm going to leave that question. Well, before I go to the next one, do we have questions? Yes, we have a couple of questions here. And um, Tando. Okay, most of them are just centered around the 13th check. Um, one, Langa is asking, the pension and medical aid is not deducted from the 13th check, question mark. No, 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 guys, listen. What's actually happening is the 13th check's really throwing you out there, hey? What you've got to do is you've got to work out your total income, right? So you're going to work out your income, which is 12 months salary plus that 13th check. In other words, it's like 13 months worth of salary that you're actually getting. You uh, uh, add all those up or you say your salary times 13 you get that figure then you subtract those deductibles and then you will get your taxable salary all right okay yeah other just center around could you please ask the teacher to do tariff systems uh, what you just said earlier the box and whisker method okay to clarify the box and all right let's method. look at the box and whisker quickly 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 if we have time in fact we must just make time so let's do that so my box and whisker plot is basically this. I draw a, a box with whiskers, in other words, two other lines, and um, that is describing my information. So let me give, up, give you some figures, and I'm just going to make these figures up. So they might actually land up being quite horrible figures. Let's say I got one, two, four, uh, six, um, a seven, a seven, and a nine okay like i said i've just made these figures up so they're not really nice figures but we'll just look at them anyway now you can get a number of questions to do with those figures you could be asked calculate the mean how do we calculate the mean we add up all those figures and we divide by the number of figures i've got so i'm going to say one plus two plus four plus six plus seven plus seven plus nine Thump, divide it by seven and that'll give me the mean they could ask you for the mode, and remember mode means most, okay? So what, which one occurs the most? Seven occurs more times than any other number, so seven would be my mode. Then they could ask me to calculate the median. Now median sounds like needle, okay? Watch the, the movement of the lips, median, needle. I'm smiling every time I say that, median, needle mode most okay like this is really lip stuff isn't it <laughs> okay i think that's why my wife married me because of my lips all right so median middle okay so we got to find the median medians in the middle so i'm going to say okay one that side 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 ah here's my middle so my median would equal six now what we've got to do is we've got to find a lower quartile and an upper quartile. A lower quartile can also be called quartile 1. My upper quartile can be quartile 3. In other words, listen to the word quartile. Quartile sounds like quarter. So I can take my data and I can break it up into four different segments. Now here's my halfway. Now what number is between halfway and this number one. Well, if you look at it, I got four, I got one, here she is here. It is two. Right. What is halfway between um, this number and the end? Got seven, I got nine, it is three. Uh, sorry, seven. So I can say that quartile one is actually the number two. 
and quartile three is actually the number seven, right? Median can also be called quartile two. Quartile one can also be called my lower quartile. Quartile two can be called, uh, three, sorry, can be called my upper quartile. Now, what is my box and whisker? Let's say I'm going to draw a line, right? And let's go 0 to 10. So I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Let's get rid of the other bit of line there. So I'm going to say, right, let's get rid of that guy there. Okay, so let's use a different color. I'm going to use yellow. Why? Because I want to. Now, what is my lowest number? My lowest number is this guy here, number one. So I'm going to draw a line. There it is there. What's my highest number? My highest number is the number nine. So I'm going to draw a line by nine. What is my median? My median is 6. Not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There she is there. What's my quartile 1? 2. There it is there. What is quartile 3? It's 7. There it is there. And now I'm going to draw this block like that. And I'm going to draw the whiskers. There they are there. That is called a box and whisker plot. Now, there are two ways I would presume the examiner can ask this. Now, we've never had this in an exam before. It's something new to this whole curriculum in mathematical literacy. We've never had to draw box and whiskers, or we've never had questions about box and whiskers. So I would presume there's one of two ways the examiner can ask this. They can either give you a question like this, where they give you the figures, you got to find the median, you got to find the lower quartile, you got to find the upper quartile, and then you've got to actually draw a box and whisker. And remember, this is my lowest number, this is my highest number. This over here will be quartile one. Oops, draw, drew a funny arrow there. This would be quartile three. And this would be my median, or also known as quartile 2. So that's one way they could ask that question. Another way they could ask the question is they could give you something like this. They could give you... Um, <coughs> sorry, let's just get different colors here. And I'm going to just get rid of some of these tiny little yellow lines in there. Cool. And back to right. And then they could give you and say that's 2, that's 5, that's, I don't know, I'm making up numbers 9, that's uh, 12, and this is, uh, let's say, 15. Right? And they could then <laughs> ask you questions about that. Right. Belinda has a uh, a question for you yeah you have one minute I have one minute all right sure I have a producer who is very uh, demanding so let me go quickly I have one minute here we go so they could also give you this kind of thing and ask you questions like they could say what is the lowest number of all the numbers you have well it's got to be two what's the highest it's 15 what's the median it's eight what's the lowest uh, uh, the quartile one it's five What's the high, uh, quartile 3? Well, it's 12. Now, I'm going to ask you something just very quickly. Kat, you did maths core, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to get this wrong. Where <laughs> is most of the marks? In this section or in this section? On the left or the right? I'd say the right. You'd say the right. And I would say you are wrong. Why? <laughs> because 25% of the marks are there. 25% of the marks are there, 25 there, 25 there, because we're breaking them up in quartiles. And folk, everything of the best for tomorrow, we've run out of time. <coughs> I will see you again just before you write your paper too. Hang in there hey, and go for it. 
All right, guys, remember, at every Thursday we throw you a question by Trevor later. Today's question is that, uh, do you text or your friends text while they drive? Is it good or bad? Remember to go to our Facebook page and answer that question. From me to, to you or from me to from us, all of us here on Mindset, is a good buy and all the best, guys.